yesterday, or on Thursday rather, there was a, a keynote speaker here at the conference. Um, and after his speech, there was quite a reaction from a lot of NSA members. And basically the mess, the message at the meeting was if anybody works hard enough, they can achieve fluency. I do not believe that. I think that uh, I've seen it happen enough. I've seen the behind the scenes of where the system has been to focus on not stuttering at all, no matter what you do, and even if you go ba ba, you have to go back over all of the exercises again. I think that is a recipe for disaster eventually, for most. Now I know some who have gained from that, but they also have had supplementary work themselves, which has led them to be more accepting in their own role and so I think that method can launch somebody, but to continually try to suppress it and to think that any little buh 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 that you may have is a failure, is a recipe for disaster, I think. Uh, that's my feeling, and I hear that, that this had been said here at the meeting. I wasn't in the room then, but yeah, I'm aware we of either. the programs because I'd had loads of those in the past that would try to prevent the blockages, and it always backfired. I simply have to know that I can stutter every day, at times I can be sloppy, and that is just me, and I think that you've got to have a, a role, it's like you have a mattress around you that can be prepared to absorb some of the blows that will happen, they're going to, I mean you're inevitably set to, to have certain fears of things. I think it's perfectly natural that fear may, may surface. What will you do then? Do you run back to the laboratory to have the fluency established? I think that is just right. absolutely ridiculous. And I think also that, uh, that the method to count the moments and oh well so many and all that, it's, it's just meaningless. You've got to get in to the way you feel, and I think <clears throat> the major thing that's happened is I don't feel as I used to feel about this matter, and we speak as we feel, and uh, no matter what the approach is, I think that we have to have a certain feeling of uh, belief in it, or that we are subject to suggestion some too. And there is a part of us, I think, that has to be convinced that we can communicate, and that is the major thing. It's not how much we may repeat or not, and to have somebody there with the thing to mark down all the buzz, that is just, I think we're beginning to realize this because we now have enough of a backwash from the failures of all these things that have happened in the past, in the so-called field, and I've been a witness over 55 years of this or more, and I mean there have been some pretty bad accidents with it, and I think we are now more realistic, <coughs> pardon me, and I think that one uh, thing that has helped is that we are beginning to hear that it is organically based, it has to do with brain function, and really uh, when you get down to it, not too much is known about the brain really, because I knew Dr. Uh, Renato Segre, he was the leader of the world in this really. He uh, stuttered himself mildly and he said to me, the, the core of this, and he, he was a neurosurgeon too, and uh, he said to me, this thing is in the central nervous system, which would mean the brain. And uh, so I learned that years ago and it just sort of seconded what I thought. But in spite of this, you can get rid of the handicap pretty much and I think you can follow what you want to do and I think you have to follow your passion in life. I, I have to ask you this. There is a convention in this hotel for people with stutter right now. There's also a convention of neurosurgeons going on. Oh, so I'm in the elevator minutes, moments before I met you, Dr. Murray, and I said to turn to a woman and I said, oh, are you a person who stutters? She said, no, I'm here for the neurosurgeon convention. Oh. And I said to her, well, we should get the two groups together. They have a lot in common. Wouldn't she, that be? She said, there's nothing in common. 
Oh, and I said to her, oh, oh, wow. Oh, dear. I said, you think? <laughs> like, I'm, sorry, no, I'm sorry that Dr. Sigri isn't around anymore. Tip, right? He died <laughs> way, way back. Yeah. But he was head of the, what is it, the World Association, whatever the name was right. then. And uh, he was a good friend of mine. And uh, he had said that himself. And he had spoken well enough. He recovered pretty well, really. I mean, he could speak five languages. And he had a stroke and only Spanish remained. And I saw him, I went to see him when I was down in uh, Buenos Aires. And there, there was a feared word. I had to get a preparatory set on that, I might say. I, I could feel the mechanism, but it went off all right, I hope. Uh, anyway, I, I went to see him and uh, he lived in an apartment that had a sort of a cage elevator where you can look through it. And we visited, and he had a Spanish left, and it was still all mixed up because of his accident in the brain, of course. And uh, then he wanted to say goodbye, and I can remember that I was in that elevator, heading down and looking up at him, trying to say adios, and he couldn't get it out. And that was my last image of this man who had been the leader in the world. So we never know what can happen, and I think it's... Uh, certainly important to live each day and to learn from each other and we certainly have been able to do this pretty well at the conference here. There will be droughts and days inundated Failings free from saturation Departures raised with no